Blog Talk Radio. Today is Sunday, July 23rd, 2016, and school is officially in. That's gonna be our only laugh of the day, probably. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, welcome to the show. School's in. I'm Mitch, and I am with my illustrious co-host, as always, the um, you never systemically racist Aaron. Hello, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and the um, never institutionalized and how you doing? Never, never hold it down, hold it down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and today we're talking about a pretty um, somber topic: the prison race and politics show. And we're talking about the prison industrial complex, unfortunately. Because um, systemic racism still exists in this country, and it affects lots of things. It it affects our whole lives, actually. It's day to day. And it affects hip hop too, which we'll talk about, you know, later on. But first, we gotta kind of break down what all the hoopla is about the the prison system, because. A lot of people don't really even understand how heavy this shit really gets. There's a lot going on. So if you did your homework, we watched 13th, the documentary by um, Ava DuVernay, and some of us read partially Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow, which are both pretty, pretty deep. And just to start off, some statistics which are alarming and shocking. 5% of the world's population um, is, I think, was it 5% of the world's population is is imprisoned on the planet. Mm -hmm. But 25% of the people on the planet that are in prison are coming from us. From the, from, it's from the U.S. We have the highest rate of incarceration in the entire world. Yep. Which is insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they said 40% of that was black people. Yep. And you're going to ask yourself why. Of course, it's easy just to say, you know what? Those, those black folks, they just be doing stuff. They just be getting thrown in prison. It's not as simple as all that. No. So, starting back from the very beginning, even before our tenure in this country during slavery, there were two things, and we, we, we've talked about this before like on our colorism show. When you when you come and you settle a country or you want to settle the country or you wanted to build it, you need people to labor for you. You can't build right. with no labor, right? Right. So how are you gonna do that? Cheaply. Not gonna pay everybody. <laughs> well it used to be that being an indentured, you know, slave, like, you know, or, or an indentured slave. Sorry, an indentured slave or an indentured servant would be the way you would, you know, kind of get that done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could you could you explain that for the listeners more? Because I don't think people understand. I think people like get indentured servant like mixed they up do. with like being an they actual do. slave. Being an indentured servant 
is very different than being a slave in that indentured servitude there is a chance for you to work until you pay off whatever it is that you owe or whatever it is that you you know like some people who came over from different countries didn't have the money to pay for their passage to America like some of the immigrants and they entered in Mm -hmm. the contracts that were like that as well but it was us like for a certain amount of years or a certain amount of money and or both so there was there was an ending it's a beginning and an ending to your work. It's not going right, to be so for the rest of your life. So it's basically right. like, you know, somebody that uh, came over to this country that didn't have anything that worked their way into having something. Exactly. They came over with that contract established, too. And, and being an indentured servant, you can do that. But that right there, again, that's going to be more more money. So you're trying to get free labor here. So we talked about this before. When humans want to do bad shit, they have to have a reason to do it. Because everybody wants to do bad shit, but they don't want to be a bad person. Mm. That's one of the most fucked up things about humans. Everybody wants to do bad shit, but they don't want to be labeled a bad person. I'm not a bad person because I did (laughs) this and this. No. You probably are a bad person. But when people want to do bad shit, they find reasons to. So they have to look at people as an other, as we've spoken about before, so they can subjugate them. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't do that to the Native Americans because they were they they were they were kind of outnumbered, and and the the um, natives were already here, so they had the home court advantage. They had already been here forever. They knew this territory, right? You weren't going to get them. So, when they did have indenture service too, one of the things that happened that I was talking to Anthony and um, Aaron about was the um, the uprising in um, Virginia, Bacon's Rebellion, that was led by Nathaniel Bacon against the governor, William Berkeley. It was against rich landowners and it was actually indentured servants who aligned themselves with Africans most of them had were either enslaved until death or they were freed after they were done mm. but they were in bond servitude the same thing we we're talking about earlier they weren't quote unquote slaves they were in bond servitude but they it was an economic uprising so it was It didn't matter what color you were. It was a class struggle. But it's always a class struggle. And that's what people are always not really wanting to talk about. Because that scares the rich white man. The rich white man does not want other people aligning themselves with people who are like them. Because then we'll outnumber them and we'll be able to turn overturn their power. So they have to find a way to divide and conquer. Do they ever? That, um, I think that's where ever, racism comes in. That's yeah, that is where that is where racism comes in. But <laughs> what I wanted to know is, um, because uh, that uh, that Bacon Rebellion situation, mm. it is kind of. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to turn it into like a joke or anything. But like, um, it was kind of funny, like the way they talk about how he died. Like, do they ever, um? explain do they ever explain like you know how he died because all i got from it was that you know he died taking the shit and it was like (laughs) yeah it sounded like it sounded like some shady shit like like somebody set him up it was an inside job or something you know what that that could have been but i never did um i never did uh get a clear on that (laughs) Yeah, they pretty vague about I it. Know it they right, but you know what? I would I would gather to say, I bet you I bet you that there was definitely some kind of foul play. 
style player put. Why you had to, why like, you, why you had to go out like that though? That's crazy. Well, I mean, that's the best time to get somebody. Hey, yo. <laughs> By way of <laughs> styles, people. Because that's when they're like vulnerable, you know. That's like when they're the most vulnerable, right? Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, You know what? The times to get you when you're most vulnerable are when you're either using the bathroom, sleeping, or having sex. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's like horrible. But um, so after those re- and that rebellion, it spread like throughout some of the other colonies, and it took a couple of years for them to squash that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, like England was still like like we hadn't gone through the um Revolutionary War yet, and England was you know we were still sworn uh, fealty to to England, and they had to send in forces to help break the shit up. So in order to end that kind of thing so it doesn't happen again, you know, what the uh, new Jim Crow talks about is getting, like, Africans, you know, our ancestors to come over because they didn't speak English, so so they can't align themselves, you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. Uh with other people. And... They're coming to a land that they are unfamiliar with. They don't know this territory. They're at a disadvantage. So, and then they they set those indentured white people and or just the, the lower class whites, period. They set them apart from us by like breaking down some of those class struggles by just giving them what they call their whiteness. Which we're always talking about. Oh, what is that? That means they eliminated all those ethnicity lines, like you're Scottish or right. I'm English, and you know he's Polish and they're French. They're like, okay, we're just all gonna be white. Just check the white box. Right, and the real and, enemy is over here. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. To this day, they're gonna want to be white. That's why they're yep. always voting against their best interests. Why they end up because being white is so important to them. They want to be part of the club, but they'll never. But it's like you're not really gonna be. Mm-hmm. You might be. Um, not really, because they're like that's why they're pissed about other people who are who don't look like them who seem to be doing better than them, Anthony. Because mm-hmm. they're like, wait a minute. I got this white car. What's the fucking problem here? Like, 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 why is my whiteness not working? Right. <laughs> my whiteness is supposed to work. <laughs> like, 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 white car is a thing. It's like, like, you know, we always talk about having black cars. Like, having a white car is really a thing, though. It's like it's supposed to work for them. Yeah. What kills me is the people that try front like it isn't though. Like it's like you know, oh. th- things aren't like that anymore and all that. Like I was watching racism. Um, racism doesn't exist, right? Like I was watching the uh, the um, reaction okay. video, that reaction <laughs> video on uh, on Jay Z's uh, story of OJ, and like a lot of the mm-hmm. older white people were like they were like offended, like oh I thought we were past oh, all this and too. all that type of shit. I yeah. said too. I was like, um, but no. But but a couple of them were like, nope, that's how shit still is. Right, and right, yeah. I did, I did part. But what I think it is a lot of times the people that feel offended are the ones that don't want to. They don't want to. You know what I'm saying? It's that denial thing. It's like you know, like yep. why we gotta, why we gotta talk about this? Why we gotta bring that up? Like why can't we just like sweep it under the rug and it's and it's because over and it's done and it's we done can't with? Do that. We can't do that yeah. because because after slavery. And I mean, just imagine the slaves get free, and instantly nobody works on a plantation anymore. Right. Everybody's just wandering around. Some people did stay on their plantations, and they, like the owners offered them, you know, like paltry jobs or like you know jobs like sharecropping or whatever. But I mean, you got to figure these these um. White folks in the south, they're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. You 
can't believe all these Negroes walking around here. So all of a sudden, what's your first emotion going to be? It's probably going to be fear mixed with guilt. Mm-hmm. So now yep. you have to come up with another system to control them. You can't just let them run free. They can't just become part, you know, they can't become part of, part of us, just live with us. Like, we've we treated them like shit forever. We beat them and whipped them. They gonna kill us in our sleep because you know you fucking deserve to be killed in your sleep. Yeah, <laughs> but see, that's that's the thing that bothered me about that type of mentality. That's like that's that in denial of the mentality. That's like, well, you know that that stuff should be over and we shouldn't be talking about it anymore because that's the same type of person that's gonna pull that white card when it's convenient for them to use. Yeah. Yeah. That's what pisses well, me off about that. That's but, the point I was trying to make with that. No, I get that. But that's the reason why. It's because, like I said earlier, humans don't give a shit about doing bad shit. They just don't want to get labeled as a bad person for it. <laughs> right, yeah. They don't want to take the responsibility. No. They want to do the shit. They want to fucking treat you like shit in second class and not even second class because... You know, we weren't even a full person fucking Constitution. 13th is about the amendment that it took to make us a full constitutional human. Right. Why does there need to be an amendment for that? Because originally we were only three fourths of a person. That's why. Right. So they had to and that was and, and that was only that was only convenient for the war. That too. And so then when the 13th Amendment came into play, see now again, every time somebody takes two steps up, they're gonna pull you three steps back. When you don't have people who, you know, enslaved anymore, they gotta figure out, well, how are we gonna do this new thing so we can make sure we still get, you know, our labor. Like somebody needs to be our laboring class. Uh huh. It's all economic. So they're like, how do we now, you know, continue with this tradition? Okay, well, we'll just shift it. And like um, the dude said in 13th, he was like, you just shift the narrative a little bit. Now what you have is all this propaganda, like Birth of a Nation, the original one. That had oh, all the man. scary black people in it, oh, man, that was and they're probably. all these all these scary black men are out there lurking in the dark, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna come and creep in your houses and rape your white women. Like, dude, nobody fucking wanted your white women. <laughs> <laughs> they, like, but that's what you think they're gonna do because that's what fucking you would do. That's why. That's what, that's what you would do. So you think did. that's what they would do. Yup, because they did it. Now they think, oh, okay. They're going to do what we did. Right. And then all of a sudden the KKK comes in to save the day. So now you have the rise of the KKK. The rise of all of these lynchings. Between... The Reconstruction and World War II periods, the lynchings were like in numerous. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. All those black folks that migrated from the South, a lot of them were migrating to get away from the lynchings, not just to, to, to get jobs. They were leaving the South to, for their own protection. Yeah, I never thought about that. So then after that, when they came in with um, Reconstruction, they like kind of, they got some better laws together. And some black folks actually got a little bit more power. But of course, the Southern whites couldn't have that shit. So in comes Jim Crow. Jim Crow came in after convict leasing. Convict leasing was what was done right after the, the uh, slaves were free. Like you were walking around and you didn't have a job. You got convicted and, and criminalized. Right. And mass incarcerated so you could do their work and they will have you doing work until you die. And this shit has been going on forever. We've always been criminalized. Right. But that's the that's the thing, like people don't realize that the narrative the narrative had to be painted that way by people that knew yep. better. 
so that you know so that things could keep so that things could keep working like that it's like um and i think i talked about this before i was watching um hidden figures and mm-hmm. um it's the part where um taraji um i forget what her character name was um she uh she had to use the bathroom she was she was on a job and um she had to use the bathroom but she couldn't use their bathroom because she was oh, black yeah, yeah. so yeah. she had to travel she had to walk for like um a certain amount of miles and it took her you know what i'm saying forever to get back to the job so mm-hmm. eventually the um the boss or the supervisor or whatever he um he asking her like where she going for long periods of time and she you know she went off on him and she basically was like you know i can't use the bathroom here Y'all treat me like I'm not even a person. Like you know, like people act like they scared to drink from the same coffee uh, uh, container as me and all that type of stuff. And it's mm-hmm. like you know, so what's the like you know? And I do good work here, so what's the problem with me? You know, taking that walk to go to the go to the damn bathroom. So this is the part that pissed me off. Mm-hmm. He he goes to the bathroom and uh rips rips the sign down that says uh whites only what yeah and now all of a sudden everybody looking and they're like oh okay i guess i guess that you know i guess that can be a thing and no that's what that's the thing that pissed me off because i feel like a lot of a lot of black people would look at that and say oh that's a decent white man for overlooking no fuck him because (laughs) it was it was only (laughs) that just that just paint the picture for me of somebody you know better you know that you know the real situation but you wanted a you wanted the people that's in that realm that knows the difference, but because it's convenient for you, you change the narrative for your convenience. But you gotta remember that that's the kind of shit people are always gonna do. It's what we do that shit right now. Like, I mean, we aren't gonna talk about how we all sitting on some conflict minerals right now doing this show. <laughs> yeah. But that shit is convenient for us. So. Yeah. Everybody is always subjugating somebody or something. It's it's. You know, unfortunately, it's the way we humans are, but we need to do better. And that this show is 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 about that. It's about everybody needing to fucking do better. Like we all need to do better. We can't let like this kind of shit continue to go on. But you know what? The thing is, eventually, when this shit does come down, because it's gonna come down, it's gonna come down hard and heavy. Because they've been skirting this shit for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the Jim Crow, after Jim Crow, you know, we were fighting for our civil rights. After civil rights, during civil rights, and y'all saw in the in the in the in the thirteenth movie that all of a sudden because it was taboo to say certain things, like you couldn't just run after niggers with a noose anymore, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So you heard, you heard Nixon's strategist talking, and he was saying, "Now you have to use certain words. You have to say stuff like law and order, and war on drugs, Mm -hmm. and criminal, and crime. So you don't say black people anymore, or say nigger with a noose. You say all these other things that still mean subjugation." Right. So they, then they started recruiting all those people from the because Democrats. What folks don't know too is that Democrats and Republicans used to be the the parties used to be switched. Yeah. yeah. And so the Republicans were more like how Democrats are now. Even and the Democrats. Yep. And Democrats were like republicans are now they were like they were racist and they were like rich and you know they were like tons of them were clansmen and y'all saw that too how many people were actually in the clan that were mm-hmm. in the into politics it used, like the clan used to be all into politics not saying how uh, used to but they're they're probably still there you're just calling it something different now they said at one point 358 delegates were clansmen yep that's crazy. That's, crazy. That's, that's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, like, I mean, you got to think while this is all going on, and Nixon is, you know, he's running on the the whole Law and Order platform. All that meant to them, and they said it flat out. Their point was to target the civil rights movement, 
by attaching heroin to black people mm-hmm. and to attack the anti-war slash hippies movement by attaching marijuana to them. So this war on drugs, it's not a war on drugs. It's a fucking war on people. And it always has been. Then you flip to Reagan. And that was during my time period. Like everybody my age, we all remember how fucking crooked Reagan was. So every time they was like, Ronald Reagan is this. We can't fucking stand his ass. He declared a fucking war on drugs before crack ever even entered the building. How the fuck do you know that that shit is going to be a thing? <laughs> right. Ain't that crazy? Mm-hmm. Setting the stage. Laying the foundation. Because, no, it's because he already knew this shit was going to be a thing. They already knew it was going to be a thing. Then all of a sudden, crack came on the scene. There's prominence for it. And crack had way more potency, but it also carried heavier drug sentences. And like they were saying in the 13th, it wasn't like they were just having like a a rhetoric about having a war on drugs. That shit was a war on drugs. This motherfucker was bringing tanks to people's houses. That's what Public Enemy and, and NWA were fucking talking about. If you've ever seen some of those hip hop um, docs where they like talked about you know LA and gangs and they were sending fucking tanks through your crib right yeah they talk about all that stuff heavy and like one of the times him and Nancy was out there with the cops like oh look what we did we went I was like oh my fucking God. like I just wanted to ah. <laughs> I, just, I can't <laughs> I just don't care <laughs> And then later on, the CIA admitted that it flooded our community with crack to fund its war. I think we already Um, knew, though. But you knowing in your head and then having that shit be confirmed for you 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Man, get the fuck out of here. So that's why in like hip hop, in my generation, you'll have everybody talking real sideways and ugly and nasty about Ronald and Nancy Reagan. Because you're going to talk about some fucking war on drugs and just and, and just say no bullshit. And your husband's a fucking crack dealer. Because <laughs> if you think the president did not know what the fucking CIA was doing, you didn't lost your mind. Right. But that's where that's where like the importance of them dividing dividing people come into play because if you didn't have that if we didn't have that separation the way it was you wouldn't have people saying that you know um like it's still people it's still people out there now there's like stuff we saying right now they like oh that's just crazy that's not happening of course it seems like it's not happening if you not if you don't have to deal with it personally if you don't see your family members in in and out of jail. You don't see your friends in and out of jail or, you know, yeah. getting locked up back to back and all that type of stuff. Of course, mm-hmm. it don't seem real. It just looked like, you know, it's a movie that's out of the ass. Because you, yeah. you don't have to deal with the statistics or the reality of it. Very true. That's very true. But, I mean, you look at every president. Because then, I mean, even fucking Newt Gingrich was like, yeah, we probably shouldn't have, um... <laughs> I was like, did Newt Gingrich just say this shit? Yes, he did. On film. On film, Newt Gingrich said we shouldn't have made like regular Coke and crack different at all. In retrospect. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, get the fuck out of here. Y'all knew that shit was wrong when you were doing it. Agreed. You knew what you were wrong when you were doing it. And it didn't get that election. And 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 that those man coming down to the next president, Bill Clinton. Get those profits pumping. And and they're fucking super predators. Uh. <laughs> and cops. Now you, you know what? I knew that I didn't shit like right cops there. for a reason. That TV show, cops. Oh yeah, like hell yeah. I can never. I don't my like parents. that shit either. My my god, my aunt loves that show. Oh my <laughs> goodness, yo! It's another <laughs> drawn out like right now. It's called um, it's called uh, a bait car. 
I heard I've seen that. That shit is fucking really? ridiculous. Like they That's got like these cars. They got these cars. <laughs> yeah, they got these cars just sitting out there open, running and shit. And then they they wait for people to um they put, take them in like certain areas, and they wait for people to come and steal them or whatever so they can catch them. I'm like this shit is exploitation like a motherfucker. Like what the hell? It's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but you know what? And we talked about so much. They they throw rocks and hide their hands. That's how they handle everything. It's like like right. somebody, you know, you want somebody standing there or whatever, and they slap you in the back of the hand and tell you other person did it. Hmm. <laughs> so they can start a fight. And then they charge people to watch it. That's what they do. Right. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Look, there are some things in this fucking world that should not be privatized, that should not be business. You know? And one of the one of those things is the enslavement of a whole people just so you can have free fucking next to nothing labor. Okay? Cause all that fucking locking up that they do of us, it's it, they went from Jim Crow to locking us all up. Right. Back to incriminating black men. Making them look all scary. Like every time you see some criminal on TV, they give you the darkest, horriblest picture. Oh, sorry, most horrible picture of what this black man, is, you know, looks like. Cause that's the their fucking boogeyman. Mm-hmm. It's what they see in their nightmares. You know. <sighs> Damn. That's depressing and sad. I mean, to the point that, like, one of the ladies was saying, and she's right, that we're scared of us. It's not yeah. just white people. That's the narrative they pushing. Look, I'm more scared of a white man than I am of some black dude. I'm more scared of white women. And as you should be. Especially if they get out. White, white I women. don't know why, why black problem. dudes are so comfortable <laughs> with white women. Like, I would be shaking in my boots when I saw no. one. Like, I'd be like, yo, yo, hey there, sister. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need you to direct that shit that way. Because, like, as soon as they go, he pissed me off. All they got to do is talk about you fucking right. And then the fucking, it's fucking Emmett Till all over again, right? Yeah. Then that okay. shit right there. Yeah. That lady so should have been got charged with something. No, we, you found out she's dead now, though, I think. No, she's still alive. She just confessed that she lied. No, I thought she was dead. I thought she kept up on her fucking deathbed. Oh, she might have confessed on her deathbed. I don't all know. I heard was, all I heard was that she confessed. She should have been charged, though, a long time she ago. She lied. She was lying. She lied. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was like the start of the civil rights movement. Well, you know. Um, credit that as being the start of the civil rights movement. And his mom allowed his Props. body to be seen. Props and you've seen mother. those pictures. You've seen those pictures. Props to his mother. Big time. I, like, I, I can't, like, I can't, like, even now with, like, you know, Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, Slando Castillo out and selling. Like, I don't, under, I don't even know how you could do it. You know? No. Nah. Yeah, at this like I told y'all before, at this point it just seemed like the the whole judicial system is just like trolling now. Like they just like it's like for for anybody you feel like you know deserve that extra time, they just yeah let them go. You know what I'm saying? Just ahead, like it's it's to the point where it's like it seemed like it's being done to to rile people up to put the focus in in like you know in other directions and stuff like that because i don't know it just it just seemed crazy to me like they letting all types of people out <laughs> like i don't even want to bring up you know who <laughs> but <laughs> i don't know it just seemed it just seemed like you know another another tactic like you know what the media been doing to just yeah. like you know, it, throw people's I'm, attention i'm watching i'm watching that case with that australian woman that got killed by the cops because mm. i feel like Something's finally going to happen now. But they I mean, fucked look up. At, they fucked up and killed just, a blonde-haired white woman. 
But but it's not just just regular people on the street, folk on the street that they demonize and criminalize. Like look at all of our black leaders. Look at Fred Hampton mm-hmm. here in Chicago. You know, look at Angela Davis. They, they try to demonize her. Look at um, Malcolm Martin, Asada Shakur. Look what they do when you try to rear up against them. Right. That's the crazy part about it. Like I was, I, I mean, I, well, I don't already read um, Masada Shakur's book, but like, yeah, every time I, every time I turn around, it seems like every year, every year is always something being pushed into effect to, you know, let's get her from Cuba. You still trying to catch somebody from thirty years ago? Yeah, yeah. thirty, she forty. Public, it's like she public. I mean, number one, and she ain't done shit to to, to y'all. Like that, right? That's the that's the craziness of it. It's just like you still trying to catch somebody from from thirty years ago. So they, they, got, they, oh, they got something got you know, to prove. And you got and you got criminals over here running around that you let off that you know you let off playing in the NFL. <laughs> oh God! Well, <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> But see, they aren't they aren't anyone that's interrupting the status quo and that's right. the problem. Right. Remember where I said J. Ever, J. Edgar Hoover actually called the Black Panthers the worst threat to democracy of like all time. Like how the fuck that, can that That should have been a red flag to the rest of the country. What do you but, mean? But but look no no no, because look at how they are look at the reactions when Beyonce did formation. Yeah, Look at what right. happened. Exactly. Look at how many that, white folks went. Oh my god! Right. That's that's the that's the craziness of it because like for for everybody for everybody that like and I kind of I kind of appreciated that because for everybody that was in the dark about you know how you know this, this racism ain't it isn't real anymore and it's not going on like the reactions of people when Beyonce did that performance. Should have told every. Should have told people everything. Should have uh-huh. told people everything like that. That shit is still alive and kicking. You know what I'm saying? The perception. The perception of, you know, what what uh black people are, what they're supposed to be. Even the thing with Kaepernick, like Kaepernick, um, and and, and the way he being treated, just for sitting down, just for just for. I'm not standing up during the flag. It's like. We gonna turn you in. We gonna turn you into a monster because you don't respect this flag. That that type of shit is crazy. It's this not regarding, really about that flag. It's not about that flag. Regarding what he's protesting too, like just disregarding it. Like the flag was a distraction from the actual the issue. Flag. Yeah, it isn't the flag at all. It's not that. Oh, you don't respect this flag. It's like you don't respect this white dick. That's what it really is. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's yeah. That's 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 really what the the narrative is for real. Like. <sighs> it, that shit is crazy. Man. Boy, I hate having to break it Boy, down. Boy, the NFL. I mean, I hate having to make it that crass, but that's basically what it boils down to in a nutshell. Is you need to respect these white nuts. That's what it is. My single least favorite reaction to that whole situation is shut up and play the sport. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Shut up. Shut up, Negro. And play the sport. Be happy that you have a platform. Hey, yeah, what did everybody yeah. think about uh, what's the name in response to that? And we're all um, Philadelphians and or former Philadelphians. What, what, you, what did you think about what Mike Vick said? <laughs> Sipping that Kool Aid. Captain Nick had the perfect response. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> yeah. he was like, your ass is brainwashed. He's, he's been a fit. Like effectively castrated, yep. right? And you know, you know what's crazy about that because, like, like I said, like because it's not as like you like well, like Ms. Mitchell was saying earlier, because it's not as blatant as it used to be, and it's just like certain it's certain little things that you know people that know understand. It's like that's that's just that's just the uh that's just the um result. Of of him being whipped by the system, and you know, all right, now my name is Toby. You know what I'm saying? But that, because that's exactly it's not what because, it is, one hundred percent. But because people not seeing the actual uh, 
a, a lynching going on. It's like, oh, well, that's not what it is at all. No, that's because, exactly what it is. Yeah, it is. See, we don't have to lynch like that anymore. So now we, we lynch right. by public opinion. We lynch by keeping you out of, you know, places that, that you need to be in so you can eat. Yep, exactly. But, I mean, I'm glad, you know, Colin is, he's standing his ground. He's not, oh, yeah, I hate the internet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, and we'll get on that in a second, because that whole fucking alley thing, man. That's just scary. That shit is fucking disgusting, man. I don't even know how to, like, but that lets you know how deep this country is wrapped up. But it's right. been like this. It's been like this forever. And until we start fighting and really, really outcrying about this shit, it's not going to change. Because why should it? Right. It's unopposed. And just to, just to, just to, because, you know, I need to, I, I need to put this out there for all my sports fans. You know, for all y'all, for all y'all people out there that love these sports so much and y'all still watch this and patronize and all of that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like y'all, y'all definitely part of the problem. Y'all, y'all are Boy, part of the problem in a big way because, uh, right? Because that that just let you know what I'm saying that just let people know that um this type of this type of shit could go on. Like a person can literally you know get um get get treated this way in the NFL and y'all you know what I'm saying and people feel some type of way about it for a week. And then they back to supporting the same shit. Like fuck, I'm not with that. I'm not with that at all. Like that's corny to me. The only sports I'll be watching is ballers today (laughs) on HBO (laughs) after we finish the show. Yeah, that 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 that, that's what bothered me more so about the whole Kaepernick situation because like I felt like you know that was the perfect opportunity for everybody to get behind him. You know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. and say that. You know what? We feel the same fucking way. If we not, you know what I'm saying? Even even um his peers, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we we feel the same way. And we not playing until, you know, um um something happens. Yeah. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But like it's the fact that that's not happening lets me know that we're dealing with a, a bigger well, issue. Well, because everybody is like, I still got to eat. I still got to make my money. I can't, you know, we're not we need, we're not we need, willing to stick our necks out like that anymore for each other. Yeah, that's a strong that. force, a strong show of force, like the Alabama bus boycott. Look, right. let's just say it like it, like it really is. If if every black person tomorrow got up and left this mf'er, this shit would just sink down into. Yeah, you're the guy in Florida talking about go back to Africa. Our reparations came in the form of Barack Obama. <laughs> Yo, that shit was crazy. Bro. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was that. like, really? I was like, really? Did he just say that? Like, yes, he did. <laughs> go back to Africa. Yeah. And, and he actually, like... well, excuse me, um, I don't have to go back to Africa. My ass has fucking built this country. I'll stay my ass right here. <laughs> I ain't never been to Africa. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> 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 I'm born and bred right here. I have just as much right to this land as you do. What did and um? Probably more. Say, Right, and the, the, bull, the Indian bull in the breakfast club said, "I have the audacity of uh, equality, or something like that." I was born here, bred here. I'm an American taxpaying citizen. That's right. I ain't leaving nowhere. If look, if you want to go somewhere, pack your shit up and go back to wherever Scotland. part of Scotland <laughs> or I think he was Italian. Take your ass I'm back to Italy. fucking North Italy where you belong. <laughs> Hey, you know what? While you talking about me being African, depending on what part of Italy your ass came from, you probably been infected by a more your, your fucking self, and you probably black. Shut up. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Look, that shit right there. But I wasn't even shocked. But see, nowadays you, I wasn't like you're not Where really because this shit is out. We we're like back to square one with this crazy shit now. Every other day it's fucking crazy race shit. Right. You now somebody's damn right. mouth like it's nineteen forty three or something. I said that's a distraction. That's a distraction from it. the monetary part, though. So. Exactly. And that's what but, it always has been. 
right and like i said it's crazy because it's not it's not as it's not as blatant it's not as graphic as it as it would have been back in the day right so people just sit people just sit there and they like well it's not that big of a deal i'm still making my money so you know what i'm saying yep. like that's that that's that's the part that fucked me up about it man like i don't I don't, I don't I don't like that. I don't respect it at all. Like, I mean, there's people still out here that just they watch sports and you know they get into it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't like you know I was always into like you know basketball and football and stuff like that. You know, younger, but like as I got older, like I realized like the politics. Like you just see like how certain people get treated because they don't they don't follow the program like Allen Iverson and people like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a yeah, because this person don't follow the, the um the program of what we need them to do, you know, like yeah. we gonna we gonna make them look like this, that, and the third, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's part there. of the reason I said I wanted to boycott the NBA too, because they did the same thing with Iverson, um when the Black Lives Matter thing was popping off, and those women in the WNBA wanted to protest, they like yeah. fought them on that yeah. until Melo okay. spoke out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And it's back to like you said, like you know, painting us as you know the monster. I'm gonna make an example out of him. He gonna you know, he's going to be perceived as this. He never going to be able to because make another dollar. Because they're going to vilify you instead of saying, well, you're not, um, you're not grateful for everything. You know, it, no, these are our fucking civil rights. I don't have to show you I'm grateful for my job and, and not also be a human being and not also stand up and fight for civil rights. That's ridiculous. Right. And you're an idiot if you think so. Well, that's that's first period, everybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know what? In light of the topic, I think we I think we're doing pretty good. Nobody has screamed or anything yet, besides me a couple of times. Like low level. But like nothing crazy. Like I think we're you know, we're keeping level heads. Woosa. So, you know, we just go woosa. So, let's, let's talk about who's getting out to lunch today. Out to lunch is a, an understatement at this point for this show. Uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> who's getting out to lunch today? Thanks. Well, I think we can all agree that it should go to the Clintons. Both of them motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, yeah, because of their crime bill. A.K.A. That the Violent horrendous. Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994. Created a whole new market. So I actually was in college at that time. And I, I, went, to, I, I went to... Oh, shut up. I went to a protest. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a protest with my professor. Like, part of my whole class went. And we went... To protest the street, the um, the three strike rule. Of course, That's it didn't, you know, do anything. But no, at least you I tried. was out there. I was out there, you know. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, as and and folks that don't know, the crime bill, um, and Clinton's war on crime, and the reason why they say that they did that, if you watch Thirteenth, they talk about it very, um. Mm-hmm. In depth. The reason why I did that is because they couldn't get elected away from these Republicans because they were talking all that, you know, law and order, law and order bullshit. So they had to. So for yeah. Democrats to win, they had to come up with their own war on crime, you know, talking point and you know, and plan to implement so they could actually get elected and what they wound up doing like put so many black and brown people in jail it was ridiculous Mm -hmm. the three strike rule made it so that if you got three strikes three felonies you were in jail for the rest of your life mandatorily that mandatory sentencing is a bitch yep and then they then they had the truth in sentencing where 
no matter what, like you couldn't be plead out. So if you were, or like you couldn't be paroled like that, you were going to eighty five percent of your sentence. Yeah, that was eighty five percent. You were going to do eighty five percent of your sentence. And we know who that shit was all proposed by, mm-hmm. Alec. Mm-hmm. That's just scary. Alec or American Legislative Exchange Council, which that shit exists to this fucking day, as far as I know. This had been around for four decades. Yes. I never Alec, heard of it. Alec elected the um proposals, fucking bills that became those standard ground laws that got Trayvon Martin killed. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't behind Trump. Look, and for all those who didn't see the movie, um, the American Legislative Exchange Council is a political lobbying group that writes bills mostly and then gives them to Republicans, largely Republicans, that are in the favor of corporations. Hmm. So basically they make rules or bills that become laws that help corporations make money. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So those stand your ground laws were helping Walmart sell guns. Some guns, yeah. Yep. Fucking Walmart. And there was a um there's a group called the CCA that they talked about too. And the CCA okay. is the um corrections um corporation of America. And they get rich off prisons, they're privatized. They said they're slowly pushing them out, though. They ain't got to see the table no more. Well, it's partly because they got fucking exposed. And that's what, <laughs> that's what Michelle Alexander keeps talking about and what she's talking about in that book. Once you get exposed, now they got to figure out another way to, to fucking do a social control on you. Yeah. Ain't that, they ain't that crazy. <laughs> yeah. They talking about the GPS monitoring and the bell system now. Well, because, oops, they outed us. We can't do this shit no more. So, you know, we had slavery, slavery gone. We had fucking um, convict lease, and that's gone. Then we had Jim Crow. Then civil rights came. That was gone. Then we had the prison industrial complex. So whatever they're doing now, because they're scrambling now. Because that shit, everything is out now where you can see it. Because everybody got phones. Mm-hmm. So we exposing your ass left and right because this shit was always going on. It just was not exposed in this manner, and you couldn't. We all got see. body cams now. But look, have you seen how they're um uh the state of fucking how uh Baltimore, Maryland has been fucking manipulating those body cams? Mm-hmm. Yo, yep. man. Woo. A lot, it's a lot going on. Speaking, speaking of body cams, I was thinking about that too. Um, like how, um, I don't know if y'all read it about it or not, but this um, this uh white girl in uh Minnesota, let me see. She uh, she got killed um by police, and um, they did like a little press conference or whatever, and they were talking about how you know they need the they need to re-examine the way um the the Minnesota law enforcement handles uh people and all this other type of stuff. And I was like, wow. I was <laughs> you like, talking wow. about that Australian woman? Yeah, yeah. They fired mm-hmm. the police chief. Mm-hmm. And it's like yeah. it's like a lawyer, had, a lawyer said she's the most innocent victim of police shooting I have ever seen. Wow. <laughs> I wish I was there to punch him in his face. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, man. <laughs> Yourself. She's the most innocent victim of police shooting I've ever seen. Oh, shit. You know so what? That, that shit hit me. Really? Yep. Motherfucker, yep. 13 year old boy getting shot who wasn't who wasn't doing he's shit. Not, he's not innocent. Innocent is a cold innocent, word. Right. Mm-hmm. Innocent fucking mean white. It doesn't mean white. That's all it means. Man, this shit. Like, he is this really 2017? This is really, this really 2017? She's so white. She couldn't have done anything. She's so white. That shit. Hair, white woman. That shit is crazy. And you know what's killing me about the whole situation is that now, you know, it's it's just another, it's one of those all lives matter situations where it's like, 
now that something like this happened, you know, anytime you bring up Trayvon or anybody else like that, it's going to be like, well, you know, it's not just black people that's getting killed. Look what yep. they did to this white woman. Like, man, fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't have time for that. No, we're talking about oh, man, they set her up on so they have something to talk we're about. We're talking about being adversely affected by this shit. Like we talked about this, and I'm going to say it now before we come off of the shit is one in seventeen. One in seventeen. Mm-hmm. One white man in seventeen white men will be incarcerated in his lifetime in this country. For black men, it is one in fucking three. One in three. Get the fuck mm-hmm. out of here with that fucking false equivalency bullshit. <laughs> One well, in three. I've been I've been I've been thinking about these shootings a lot lately too and like how we talking about like the prison industrial system and like um you know how they keep talking about how the prisons are crowded and all that type of stuff and you know like I, I think I think like the funding the funding isn't is isn't the same as it used to be. Yeah. So Cause, cause so, Alec ain't back in CCA no more, right? So what? like, yeah. mm-hmm. so like that's what that's what got me like re like thinking like these um these shootings and all of that because it's probably it's probably a green light you know what I'm saying like we can't bring them yep. in anymore like we yep. were doing before we might as well just take them out. Yep. That's why I said the cops got to be demilitarized. That's an important step right there. Like they should not. Like it always grinds my gears. Like I could be at home in the hood, whatever, and I see three or four squad cars on my way to and from the corner store. But if I go out in the in, in the suburbs, like I gotta look for them motherfuckers. They ain't nowhere to be found. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Go figure, right? And they, like, it's, it's basically it's basically dudes out here looking for trouble. That's all they doing. They out here riding around with guns looking for trouble. And they are like even because you guys, so you know. I go to the up to the corner. I didn't see five cops, cop cars. Like it's from from here to like I live on like forty four. If I go to forty four up to up to like thirty fifth, I didn't see at least five or six cop cars by the time I uh-huh. go right. going those they everywhere. Blocks. They everywhere. They everywhere. Right. And I sometimes looking at them like, what the fuck? What do you want? Right. They out here looking for trouble. They ain't got nothing else to do. They riding around looking for trouble. Literally, that's their True. job description. Right around, look for trouble. But, but, and you got to remember, as I was talking about earlier, and as we just started talking about for out to lunch, when you make it in someone's interest to be mm-hmm. locking up folks, because a long time ago, you put these white people mostly white people as overseers all those little all these white folks that you gave their um whiteness to they made them overseers of us put them just a couple of steps a hair tooth above us mm-hmm. and so that that shit their livelihood their life their everything is dependent their place in society is dependent. Some of these groups, like Alec, their money comes from prisons. So when you make this shit privatized, when you make this shit somebody's livelihood, hell yeah, looking for somebody to fucking do something. Because that shit is, their job is dependent upon that. You put them in a space where their whole life is about doing that. Yeah, and right. I don't mean I don't mean serving it because your job is really for fucking supposed to be serving and protecting, but that's not what that shit really is. No, no, it's all about that the shit is an extension of that fucking. No, that shit is an extension of that fucking overseeing from way back in the day. Right, like Anthony said, like that the the whole perception is like different if you go to you know other neighborhoods, you go to a more suburban neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Um you know, let it basically if you see the cops doing the same thing in those neighborhoods as they doing, you know what I'm saying, in in black and brown neighborhoods, that shit is called harassment. That's it harassment is. In, that's harassment in a, in another type of neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? But because it's happening in in, in neighborhoods that's considered, you know, poverty stricken. 
super predator, that type of shit. Yo, man, get the fuck out of here. You know, in both the book and in in the in the thirteenth documentary and in the new Jim Crow, they both show statistically that white men are more likely to do drugs and get involved in drug related crimes than black men are. Oh, trust me, I know. That shit is more demonization. So you can continue to subjugate us. That's all it fucking is. Right. All it is. But, of course, we don't necessarily help that shit. No. And that's what we're going to talk about now. (sighs) We're coming out. (laughs) We're coming out of lunch. Unfortunately... Now we gotta talk about us. So too many of us don't fucking know how to act right. <laughs> At all. <laughs> Excellent segue. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't because, and y'all know this is true because we talk about this on the fucking show all the yeah. damn time. Well, they talked about it on the 13th too. Yep. He said he said like you strip away a whole generation of leaders and we're not prepared to defend ourselves now. Nope. Like everybody they they killed all they killed everybody. Locked up everybody else. Well the, the, I mean, unfortunately that's true because now who do we have leading us? Future and a face off man. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> But like, um, don't that like I feel like that kinda go back to the um conversation we had about like, you know, um uh like being made an example of not to not to compare like, you know, more stronger political figures to people like Michael Vick or anything, but like um like that affects us that affects us too. Like when you see when you see like M- Malcolm X and, you know, the Huey P's and Bobby mm. Sills and uh, mm. Martin Luther King. When you see them getting getting shot down and 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 you know treated a certain way, you know what I'm saying because they tried to speak out on certain things, it it mm. kind of like brings like a certain type of hopelessness to the situation. Like, yeah, it's the public weapons all over again. That yeah, it's like it's like Aunt just said, it's like it's like being tied to the tree and whipped in front of your family. Yep. Yeah. Right. My problem is like why don't why don't people see it that way though? Like I don't I feel like a lot of people don't see that that's that that's what's being happened that that's that that's what was happening around that time, you know what I'm saying? I th- I feel like it was easier to see then than it is now. Like I said, like now they use money as the uh weapon. I was say, now money is involved. But, and and that's what I was just getting ready to say, you hit the nail on the head it's because we allowed ourselves to be our values to be infiltrated and we traded just like I always talk about we always talk about on this show about how we traded in the love of of this culture for money and when you allow money to come in and be a factor then our whole community right now is overrun with the disease of greed and this endless race for money, it's like they don't give a fuck what their val- that what values are. They're on their own social media talking off fucking money phone. Right, <laughs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> and then, like, even though we give Jay Z grief, like we're talking about, we give him grief. But I mean, we agree with the money phone shit. I always, like, you I always do that. Do that. I always you right. do that. You got boozy badass. Telling them to, to whatever, Jay Z. You got Drake coming up behind, him, like whatever. I'm about to get on this fake money phone. Fuck what you talk about. Right, exactly. And like that's a that's a constant that's a constant thing now. It's like, you know, like you can't you can't tell me what to do or or dictate. And I feel like that's a that's a childish response to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying like, but, but, but that's the thing. He's his grown man. These are everybody now right. is a child. They're not adults. They're not they're not mature. Yeah. It is a it is it's a childish response, but at the at the same time, like, um, 
you know, they 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 pushing the narrative to, you know, these kids that don't know any better. That's you know, that 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 look at them, that look at them like, oh well, you know, Drake probably know what he's talking about more so than his old head. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, that kind of thing. Of and it's like, no, nah, but that's that's what's going on. Y'all know y'all know how I go. You know well, what I'm saying? Like, it's about it was about money. He got way more money than Drake. So who would you be listening to? Right, that's why. But, that's why. That's why I like this whole album because even though he may be pandering, he's the right person to get his message. I agree with because he has he has the more money. He's more influential. He's a statement to the culture. Monetarily, yes. Yeah. But you got these. You got these like these dimwits, like academics, saying shit like, you know, oh, oh, God. oh mm-hmm. well, you know, like. People want to people want to see the money, like you know Jay Z, not the type of person. Well, not nowadays at least. You know what I'm right. saying to be to be showing you like you know what I'm saying like you know how much he worth and all that type of stuff. And like nowadays, I mean, you like, see every year on the Forbes list. You really I do. Mean, <laughs> see, but that's where that's all you need to fucking pay attention. See. That's where people that pay attention to the Forbes list. Like we talking about like everybody this, should pay attention to that. This, this generation, this generation now not looking that deep. Like they gotta, they got, they gotta go on the gram and see you with that <laughs> bread. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? It gotta be some physical type of, type of uh, uh, evidence. I, know, Aaron, I definitely see um, the thoughts and the ones tricking off, or or you know, or or trying to get through the trick off on them. They could shoot off the fucking Forbes list to you. <laughs> It's the yeah. dudes that must not know because some of these Insta- right. Instagram. Right. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly what it is. I think it's more so. I think it's more so the guys. <laughs> oh, brother! I but don't yeah, they know what, but he's right. Like, work on your fucked up credit and your fucked up teeth. Yeah. And stop talking on a damn money phone, okay? We don't, we're, yeah, we're, we're way too enthralled with money in the first place. That shit is not going to save you. In fact, it's going to snatch your fucking soul. And you're going to be walking around looking like you dead behind the eyes. I got to get back to that knowledge itself. Yes. I, I just, I, I don't know. And I mean, it didn't start now. I'm not even going to lie about that. I was telling y'all before because y'all was like, oh, I don't remember. I would look. That's just been going on since forever. Cause like, even last week I was talking to somebody about our Mob Deep show, and I was like, um, go listen to the Prodigy show, cause we were talking about my this life, and he's like, he was like, he said, like, even though Mob Deep ain't never had no street cred back in the day, and that that was a thing. Why did you right. say that? Yeah. And why they didn't have street cred? Cause they haven't been to jail. <laughs> oh right, uh-huh. yep. That's what oh, it all. Wow. Comes, yep. That's what it all come down to, especially these days. But I'm saying that was the fucking '90s, and the same thing with all the rest of them. Like, you know, I mean, look at Nas is One Love. He shouts out right. for making in jail. The whole yep. song is about being in jail. Like that shit yep. has been going on forever. That's your yep. street cred right there. Having and been that's in prison. What, that's, what, that's what's so crazy about that particular era too, because like, um. I feel like back then, you know what I'm saying, like, um, you know, for like street cred, like, you know what I'm saying, this this person actually been to jail, so by default that makes him the better rapper, like, you know what I'm saying. Right. So somebody like, so somebody like Anthony that's like, oh man, I fuck with Cormega because I feel like he spit better than, you know, this person on this track, or he rap better than this person on this track, and then somebody mm-hmm. else just, would just give it to him based on the fact that he the only one. Out of Mob Deep and Nas that actually been to jail, like you know what yep, I'm saying? Like they'll, they'll he give it to him based on that. He, be, he living that shit. He be spitting. Right. That shit is so remedial. That shit is it crazy. Is. So I mean, but but that's literally the way it fucking is, though. And it's like that, and that's the way it is. Huh. For real. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like that shit has been that way for some time. Like I remember when um, NWA was out. Like they started calling them out to see which one, and it was like, oh, okay, he's a, he's a drug dealer. So, all right, right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it like, was that's like, it. oh man, like seriously, up yep, because you because you can't talk reality shit or any of that. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't come out and talk reality shit or any of that stuff stuff unless you actually been to jail or you had a prison record or you was a drug dealer or 
Yep, I mean, that, I get it. You should be what, talking about that shit if you didn't do. But at the same time, you can't be like hard if you haven't been to prison. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're just smarter than the rest. You're harder to catch. Like what type, type of shit? <laughs> or you just didn't engage. <laughs> like, come on, we gotta right. Better. And what's crazy about it? The the whole the whole like that whole culture like that prison culture and rap is that. It got to the point where it got so bad where like you know if you if, if you a group like tribe called quest or you you know what i'm saying you are you are most deaf or somebody like that yep. you you irrelevant you irrelevant to the situation because it's yep. like it's like you're not even you, on top of the fact you know what i'm saying that you didn't go to jail you're not talking that shit so it's mm-hmm. like why it's like why are you even rapping like that's the perception it's like but that's you know what why? happened during my era, basically. Basically during that that um like that whole period where everything started turning commercial. If mm-hmm. you hadn't had a prison record or been to because like remember Tupac, same thing. Tupac gets he didn't get all that love and respect till he fucking went to jail. Ain't that crazy? That shit is crazy. <laughs> <That's> ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> What's cool about jail? Nothing. They love it in that John. They love I it. I don't say there ain't shit to love in jail. Okay. It ain't that much two cheese in the world? Look, <laughs> yo. The other thing we ain't talk about is they make you fucking all that labor you do, all that fucking free labor that those that those fucking corporations get off your back. That's the other reason why everybody, you know, they want everybody in jail because they, because if you knew half these corporations. That was making money off motherfuckers in jail. Mm-hmm. They said you have to not, Walmart. Look, you have to, look, JC Penny was on that list. Helmet. And then they like they they all like hop off when they get caught. You know. Yeah. That that whole that whole that whole prison culture and rap shit is like that shit is detrimental and it doesn't help that you know we so quick like you said we so we so quick to sell out to the dollar that a motherfucker that really that really wasn't even about that life to sell that shit to the kids you know what i'm saying because i know i know people like people don't like to admit it but like that's who it's being sold to initially you know what i'm saying right Right. because that's the next generation that's going to come up and they're going to take it and run with it like that Yep. Like you got rappers rappers that sell out so quick and sell that shit straight to the kids. And on top of the fact, like we already being demonized. We've been demonized for years and y'all helping the situation by Just putting being this, right the fuck into it. Yeah. That putting this image out, you know what I'm saying? That you know, this uh, you know, this is gangster and I've been to jail and I'm out and these other rappers can't talk about it because they haven't and they not even rappers because they haven't been to jail. Like that shit is crazy. Yo, I'ma say it one more time. Cause answer it last week. Fuck future. <laughs> fuck, fuck future. Capital F on both phrases if you want. Fuck future. I don't care if he knows. We don't like you now. When we were watching that documentary the other day about Atlanta, and he started talking about how when you want to get out of, cause I mean I can tell he's fucking dead behind the eyes now. I get it. He ain't got no soul. Cause he was talking about what he would live through and how many people was on drugs and how many people did drugs, how many people sold drugs and he was around. He he liked Vince Staples. Like they grew up in that shit. Like they don't have a soul. Right. They need to it's, like go to the fucking wizard and get a soul. But it's not <laughs> <laughs> But seriously that like he but he was talking about if you was in this you would do whatever it took to get out, including if that means you and whoever, even your best friend. He's like you you your best that means he doesn't give a shit. He right. doesn't and like, give a shit. And like I said, like for, for people that for people that know better and then like, you know, especially older people, you know what I'm saying, that, that seen like the effects of it already. Like it's certain people that get it, it's certain people that's older that don't get it. But I feel like it's more of us that do. When he's saying shit like that, like that's being fed to these young kids out here yep. that that's growing up in the same situation. And they like and they relating to that. They like future rights. 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no other option but to live this way mm-hmm. to, to get out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I that's feel like that shit is dangerous. Not true. I feel it like you gotta, you gotta try mighty hard to disregard the truth behind this shit because everything is so easily accessible on the internet and whatnot. I guess common knowledge now, the shit that's going on. It is, but that depends on what people are checking for. It's like and remember your fucking reality. Like like if if your reality is, is as how future said it, that's just not gonna fucking mean anything to you. That's, your fucking that's what I'm saying. You gotta you gotta try to ignore that other shit. Like you gotta choose that lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, true, definitely. It's like like in I seen that shit back in the day too, like when um back when we was in school. And everybody was just, everybody was talking about Meat Mill. Everybody, Meat Mill this, Meat Mill that. And, like, I would literally, I would be in the libraries after school. And kids is in there on the computer looking up Meat Mill freestyles, Meat Mill videos. And, then like, uh-huh. and like this is, and, and fight videos. All they watching is fight videos and Meat Mill. And it's like, this is what people are feeding themselves nonstop. Mm-hmm. You know what yep. I'm saying? And that's that's where the brainwashing shit come in like you know what i'm saying like that's why that's why like um i was telling anthony um the other day like i understand like what kendrick was saying where he like you know i used to want to see the penitentiary way after elementary it's like because like if that's all yeah. you're being fed you know what i'm saying it's like well shit that's a rite of passage that's what's supposed to happen because i've seen it happen so many times you know like that that's but, that's the type but of monster, we talked about that this form. before we, well, we, we we talked about this before. This shit is not by accident. Because we've had this discussion before, and we're going to further the discussion when we talk about... When we have the bro man show, you know, because love is for bros. <laughs> and Sir <third> Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> love is for bros, and women are hoes. And that's the narrative. Bad dog, no. No, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. no man talk. No, <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, all of that stupid shit. All of that gets the Forrest Whitaker right there, aka side eye. Um, <laughs> but we, yeah, we don't subscribe to that shit. But you have to remember, everything is meant to filter you back to that fucking prison industrial complex. So yes, that this shit, our music has been infiltrated and it has been used to help filter your ass right back to that prison because if all you want is a steady fucking diet of this shit you're going you're, you're angry as shit you're gonna be out in the street doing illegal shit trying to get all this money your ass is going right fucking straight to prison because you're living in an animalistic fashion that means you're not vibrating at a higher level your mind is not moving at a conscious level okay you're not thinking about the things you do you are just in animalistic low level mode one day we had to talk about the um Maslow's hierarchy of needs on this show but when you're when you're in that that last rung like the very bottom rung of Maslow's theory the only thing you're worried about is is very low level basic shit and that means you're operating at a base level you're going to be animalistic you're going to be doing things that are illegal probably because those will be the things that will be afforded to you and you will be channeled right back into that prison system with this fucking music you're listening to and i don't give a shit who wants to say like academics it's just music no the fuck it isn't no, it isn't. It's gonna, it's gonna be people. Fucking, go ahead. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be people right now saying that you hating right now. They saying you hating. I don't hating. give a shit. I don't give a shit. That shit either feeds your soul or it works to your detriment. That shit is a slow burn. It's like what you eat. You may not die today from what you eat. Okay, music feeds your soul in the same way that food feeds your body. Right, and in future in uh in twenty one garbage, they just they just uh, they, they feed you. they feed they feeding you that uh that 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 cake boo-boo. and ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I 
<laughs> that's all it is. That's all it is. Y'all gonna be it's, obese soon. You gonna be in jail, fatting in jail. <laughs> Wearing a polka dot shirt. This is a depressing <laughs> episode. And and yeah. you heard me. Huh? I said you gonna be you gonna be overweight and in jail wearing a polka dot shirt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, that's how it's gonna go down. Mr. Brown looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo. <laughs> talk about talk about you gonna eat that cornbread? <laughs> I don't wanna joke about that because that's not funny, but yeah, is, I know I know is. y'all I know y'all like jumping on future but but that twenty one garbage ass boy, he had another one like that pisses me off heavily because he t- he does the same exact thing that I was just talking about, like, you know, like talking talking shit about, you know, people that, oh, he ain't hard. This, this person ain't hard. Every other song, he talking about who not hard, who not real. Because they ain't been in jail. Because he been yeah. in jail already. Who, who well, needed to talk about street, this? Word on the street is he really lived that life, though. No, I'm, no, he did. But yeah, so he did. But that's, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, be, because I really live that life, you know what I'm saying? Like, these, yeah, these you not other hard. Rap. Yeah, you ain't mm-hmm. hard. You shouldn't be glorifying it though. Yeah, he that's, doesn't that's... care. Cause he, cause that shit is making that is making that bread for him, he, and that's mm-hmm. that's all they care about. Look, that can't even be bothered. The ones who been in jail and who haven't can't even be bothered to make a fucking coherent song that actually matches the title of the damn song. So why would <laughs> they care about not talking about? Shit to the fucking detriment of that damn community. Seriously. That shit is just like, uh, I can't. Like, we got a really long ass list on this show. It's getting horribly long. We uh, do. I hope we don't have to have a part two for this, you know. <laughs> it's just getting bad out here. It's so, getting bad. So that's um second period. So, I know we wanted to do recess, and we wanted to talk about somebody who was doing, like, the opposite of all this shit. (laughs) There's not many people out there, though. Unfortunately, there are not. There really aren't. But we did kind of look at Chance the Rapper. Why you do that? Don't do that to Chance. <laughs> he might deserve it. I don't know. I'm hearing some things. <laughs> Wait, no. Don't you copy him. Damn it. Why don't we stop getting through a show without saying copy? <laughs> oh, my God. We can't even do one show without him. <laughs> it's like a prison show has his name in it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. I don't know. I don't know. Look, at this point, I ain't heard nobody say no shit like this. Chance said <laughs> because I'm calling it. I'm calling it. No, here in Chicago, um, they're about there's there's work being done to legislate, pass some, um, take some bills and make them into laws about legalizing weed. Um, here medicinally it's already legal but recreationally it's not and they want to make it recreationally legal here and mm-hmm. it's going to bring of course a bunch of like a trillion ton of revenue in here so that's the first thing they want to do but Chance the Rapper said you know what when you make that shit legal you better make some laws okay to release all those black and brown people that were adversely affected by that shit you need to let them go out of jail and you need to expunge their fucking records so they can get out there and be you know <laughs> productive ass science. citizens and you mm-hmm. can't be dragging their, you know, them through the mud and making them third and fourth class citizens with your fucked up trumped up law mm-hmm I haven't right. personally heard anybody open their mouth to say anything like that. <laughs> right. It's coming down the pipe. I feel it. You know, so I'm going to champion him. We don't. Yeah. Round, round of applause. 
We don't know about the impending Zoom yet, and okay, we we haven't gotten any like word really on what happened between him and the Justice League and whoever the low level people was that he said he paid. We don't know yet. Okay, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. No, don't call it. <laughs> You know what? I feel like everybody hating on him right now, cause he's he, he he's he's even gonna help save SoundCloud as far as we know, and we like that shit cause our platform is affected by. That. <laughs> <laughs> I better at least get my money back. I better get my money back. No, like we need him to be the Jay Z of SoundCloud. <laughs> I need him to do the same thing that Jay Z did with Tyler. <laughs> He might pull it off. Look, if he puts his name on it, I bet you people will actually start paying for it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I, and I feel like people like him, I even people, so people like, um, like my boy Killer Mike. See, I'm telling you, Chance Shook Knight all over again. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Killer Mike is the same way. Like he's always talking about shit like that. Like you know, like um, laws and politics that that are gonna help us and not hinder us from doing shit we need to do. Mm-hmm. You no, know, we gotta start paying attention to people who have our fucking best interests at heart. Killer Mike makes excellent points. He does. He knows his shit too. Yeah. Like how how y'all feel about how y'all feel about him um like on the Bernie Sanders thing? <sighs> he put his money on the wrong horse. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think Bernie so. wanted too much at two, at one time. I voted for Bernie too. I did too. I, I met him at Red Terminal, but he he wanted too much at one time. I mean, I feel like um. I always feel like politics is, you know, for us is always just, you know, the lesser of of a degree of evil. Mm-hmm. And there's no getting around that. But, you know, I like, I always like what Bernie had to say. I'm still fucking around with Bernie. Like, I follow him to see what he does. To me, he's my president. I, I don't. I don't really look at the other dude. I don't even know what he's doing. He's right. still being a liar. Still, still on the front line. He is. He out there. That's like how you supposed to be as a, you know as as somebody who's a politician. I like that shit better, and I don't care. I don't expect a politician or even a person. Everybody's talking about. Well, he's crooked too. Fucking name me a person that's not. People yeah. are fucked up. They just are. That's true. Human nature. I don't know any unfun fucked up people. So if you could find somebody who's as 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 minimally fucked up as Bernie, I'm gonna take that. That's what I'm gonna take. I'll take it. Hmm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> He doesn't look as old in person either, by the way. Look, I think he's spry. I think your president <laughs> right now, he the one that's old and, and he, he loses his un, body. He's unhealthy. Oh, gosh. You mean President Baby Hands? <laughs> <laughs> he's unhealthy. <laughs> I can't. No, I definitely... Uh, uh-uh. <sighs> I know. Boondocks episode. Look, we all know we in the Truman Show every day, all day. Yeah. But I mean, it's been like it's been like that though. It's been like that. We just we just seen it all now because it's on the internet. It's on everybody's phone now, so it looked crazier. Well, if you were really paying attention, you always knew this shit was going on. Yeah. And you can't go nowhere because we can't go back to Africa because that shit tainted in a motherfucker and it's been... There's no place, like I told y'all before, that colonialism has not fucking had its nasty hands on. So there ain't no fucking where for you to go. 
You need to do whatever you gotta do where you at. So you mean we can't we can't go for Umar? <laughs> Look, you can go go for Umar if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna Umar help. Never get, that'll never get taken take it take it seriously. I don't know if a full Umar is gonna do it for you. But you know, let Umar tell you. You'll feel better afterwards. Everybody be a Garveyite. You know, <laughs> everybody do that. Because that's going to help yeah. you. It's not going to help you. Yeah, make sure your, your ancestry is straight. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's not going to matter if you go over there and everybody fucking hates you. I know. Ain't that crazy? I was watching that video you sent. That shit is crazy. I mean, your ass is fucking American. You're American. Yeah. You think you're gonna walk over there and be like, "Look, I'm black like y'all." They're gonna be like, "The fuck?" <laughs> Laugh you out the place. That one I do with us. What? But just some of the shit and the customs and things that they're probably doing over there, you're gonna be like, "The fuck is y'all doing?" I'm not ready to hunt so chicken. Much. Look. I read somebody's comments on some of those videos and they were talking about how they were married to somebody. I'm not going to say what island they were from. Anyway, this the woman the um the woman owed one woman owed his mother-in-law like money and then in or like because she couldn't pay her, she turned her 6-year-old daughter over to her. Childish payment. Yes. It's crazy. I was like, I was like, the fuck. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so y'all don't want to know the shit that's going on in places that's not this country. Seriously, y- you best, and I know. Black folks want to build. Look, we were talking about that too. You gonna have to fight. It's always gonna be a fight. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Because I mean, the be, same uh... thing happens when you try to build shit in black communities too. Like, it, 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 this shit all gets either gets torn down on you. They, they seize it and build roads over it. They do not want you to build or get any empowerment at all. Uh, no assets. We got to be persistent, though. We need to be be working in larger numbers, but we need to be doing it in conjunction with a whole lot of people who are like us. Right. Yeah, I, I always say that that's the issue. Like, that's the bigger issue. Like, Cause people, it's just like with um, like how we talk about rap music and how like, oh, it's no decent rap music out here. Everybody's a mumble rapper. Everybody, you know, and it's like, but there's decent artists out here. It's just that it's not, it's not that camaraderie. It's not prevalent. You know? Yeah, it's not, it's not that camaraderie that you know you would have had like years ago. Yeah. To um, to to um, put that on the forefront. Like everybody out for their own. Everybody out for themselves. You know what I'm saying? That's why I do I do appreciate like when um Talib Kweli do stuff like he always got some type of collaboration and um you know stuff like that to um bring mm. people in bring people in you know what I'm saying to um that that uh that that share his uh vision on a certain um mm. topic or or whatever like that's that's um dope to me. Even I don't know if y'all seen it he did a um he did a show. I was looking at it online and he was like, um, and like somebody in his crowd, I think this is around the time when Lil Wayne was popping and somebody in the um, crowd was saying like, fuck Lil Wayne or whatever. And he was like, look, it, it's not going to be any of that in my show. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, you know, he an artist, like I'm an artist and you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just because you don't respect his music, don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think I well, thought that was dope. That means we can't scream fuck future at his show? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> Probably quick to say I'm a grown man. He can't tell me how to think. I'm a grown man. He can't tell me I how mean, to think. I mean, that's a little different. Like you know, we on our own platform. <laughs> but I kind of, but I re, I respect that. I respect like you know that he um that that he did that because a lot of times what we do is we we promote we promote the fact that we divide it a lot of times when we you know like um when we like you know uh, uh have uh, our different opinions about shit. Yeah, when we have our different opinions, but like he didn't, he didn't like encourage his fans to, you know, like yeah, like just outright just Wayne, right? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, and I thought, I thought that was kind of dope. Yeah, I wouldn't go to a Talib show and scream for. I wouldn't even bring Twenty One Garbage or you know mm-hmm. or, or Yachty into that conversation. Like, I wouldn't be even talking about them at a Talib you know, call. Last up. thing on my mind. Last exactly. thing on my mind. Exactly. Like, like, I don't know. Sometimes that shit seems like it's trolling, almost. Yeah, yeah. That's really what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm glad that he nipped it in the bud. But that was cool. Yeah, that, that is cool. Um, so homework. It. Well, next show we're gonna be doing our list show for conscious rappers. So we're gonna be giving our probably top five i don't see the three of us being able to get a top 10 listening between the three of us it's just not gonna work <laughs> dylan 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 i spit hot fire <laughs> <laughs> so um so you know get your co- favorite conscious rappers together see how your list compares to our list i already know that number one on anthony's list is going to be black thought Without top even five having that alive. top five that alive. What's my regular top five? Wait a minute, we talking, we talking, we talking top five conscious rappers. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That's that's What's interesting. My top five I don't think I, I don't think I ever thought about that. I got like a top five, but like it's people in there that's not <laughs> that's not yeah. considered conscious. Top five, just conscious rappers. Conscious rappers only. Most of my top five. Most of my top five fit on that list. And I think number five for Anthony will be Vince Staples. Oh gosh! Don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> well, you know, you know, he's trying to put that out there. He trying to be conscious. He trying to uplift the people, man. Whatever he said, he don't want to be called that shit anyway. As we said before, so I, you know, I don't even know how they keep putting him in the in the conversation for a conscious rap. I didn't realize he was considered a conscious rapper. He was. They were trying to tell him as a conscious rapper. I don't know where yes. that shit was coming from, but you know, you know what that is though. That's people settling for mediocrity. It's like, like I said, like we got all this bullshit. Like you listen to all this bullshit. So like when you hear, when you hear somebody like Vince Staples, all he got to say is a few words. You know what I'm saying? That mm-hmm. it's not about, it's not about shit. But you know, it's it's something that you know. Somebody can be like, oh, okay. He got some type of perspective on something. So it's like, oh, yeah, he definitely, he conscious. Of course he conscious compared to 21 Savage. Like, get the fuck out of here. That shit crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know. But I, I mean, I I yeah, you, you can't, that's not anybody to, to compare anybody to, though. Right, <laughs> right. But that's not the perception, though, unfortunately. Well, I mean, we have people out here who say things like, you know, like now, like I told you, people who have told me plenty of times before that that they like a certain MC now or they like this one or that one because they can understand what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's, yeah that's where we at with it now. <laughs> that's not, no. Or, you know, 21 Garbage will tell you that if everybody were lyrical, everybody would sound the same. Except for the fact that everybody was lyrical at one point and no one sounded the fucking same. Right. Sounding the same is taboo. But now they're not lyrical and they all fucking sound the same. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're not lyrical now and I can't tell one from the fucking next. Seriously. Not really. They all the same. They all the same. And they scared the fucking death not to be auto tuned. The fuck. You scared of death to use your own voice to rap with. 
Yes. Or do whatever it, it, it is you doing, because this shit don't rhyme no way. In, in the words of Tyria Lannister, I wish I could poison the whole pack of them. <laughs> that was very nice. <laughs> Who didn't get that GOT reference right there? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, me, I don't watch GOT. Oh, uh, man. Shout, out to, shout out to everybody who's going to watch GOT as soon as they stop listening to this show. Hell Woo! yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's the show, but we still want to stress all three of us. If you oh, haven't future. watched Thirteen, <laughs> yes, fuck Future. That's first. If you have not watched Thirteen by Ava DuVernay, or and or you have not read the new Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, please, please, please make sure you do both of those things. They are necessary for your mental health and growth okay yes need that shit and michelle alexander is prominently featured in 13 okay so a lot of the things that she talks about in 13 are extensively um expounded upon further in her book the new jim crow she lays that shit right down the line you you really really gotta read that so that's our show. We hope it didn't get too brown this week. But no, this was a serious topic and we had to tackle it with a little more grit than normal. No. Yeah. It was rough. It was rough. We got through it. And now we're on game. The insecure. Now I get to see what East is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that dude come back too. Damn, Damn I gotta watch two shows tonight. Do her, she going through her whole phase. Yeah, Issa Rae, that's my girl. Anthony, I'm, I'm gonna have to rewatch that. Uh, what's the name? The Everyday Struggle to see if Issa Rae look really uncomfortable for real, for real. <laughs> she was like academic as if she recorded. Yeah, that. I would have. I gotta watch that too. Wait a minute, wait a minute. She recorded what? She recorded she what? She recorded herself having sex to practice for the rule, for like practice having sex on the show. Oh, I'm, wait a minute, I must have missed that part. <laughs> I don't remember that. I don't remember it was at, her, them, them asking her what drink smelled like. <laughs> that was, was weird. Like, that was, she weird. was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was at the beginning of the episode. Academic and asked for a hug. For a hug, he, he asked her for a hug. <laughs> Awkward ass nigga. He was like, he was like, here, come give me a hug. I was like, oh. Awkward ass. Yeah, he was like, academics. Why? Yeah. Leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? I feel like, and I hate to say this, I love Issa Rae. Me too. I feel like. Like, she's like the natural, like, blackity black girl that, that like, the one that everybody is okay with being natural and blackity black. Mm-hmm. She real with it? No, it, like, not in a good way. Like, like no, no. she's the one. No, that should be more than fucking one. <laughs> but I feel oh, she's like... The only- She's like Don't their poster the child. She's like their poster child for. Oh, okay, um, she's that one natural girl that I wouldn't mind boning. Like, that's what I feel like, and I hate to say what that. About, uh, what's the name from The Walking Dead? Because it shouldn't fucking be like that at Michonne, all. Michonne. The Walking Dead. Yeah, Michonne. I don't know if they look at her like that. I, mean, I don't think she got the same. I don't think she got the same. Uh, Mm-mm. Uh, I don't think she get the same response. Oh, she's magically delicious too. Yeah, but she's see, all right. But see, she, she, <laughs> and I think she's beautiful. But I'm saying, like, you're in a different headspace. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. talking about to like to to us at large. Like, I need us to open our mind and expand our shit out to where we start seeing, it, you know, a lot more shit to be beautiful. Yeah. So then you wouldn't be trying to hump Issa Lay's leg when she come on fucking television. <laughs> Hey yo, <laughs> he tried it. He tried it. 
<laughs> I mean the same like when she went on to Breakfast Club. Well, you know, Charlemagne is always Charlemagne. Charlemagne. He do that to every damn body. Yeah. Yeah. But, so yeah. I, I and school is officially out. We got TV to watch. Holla. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get back to our lives. 